So this is from Chapter 2 in Dynamic Biomechanics. Um, you can see the image here. You can kind of describe certain parts of this motion. Um, this is a strome motion that can be done in a higher level of a dartfish. Um, but, so we're going to talk about qualitative analysis. So what is qualitative analysis? Typically, it means non-numeric. And you can see quantitative is on this other column. And that means usually some sort of numbers. Um, and so who uses these analyses? Qualitative can be coaches, phys ed teachers, um, biomechanists, kinesiologists, trainers, therapists, tons that we use qualitative analysis every day when we're describing movement patterns, etc. Now, quantitative, you'll typically see in the literature. So they're really trying to measure something accurately so we can say if one technique or exercises improves muscle function or range of motion or force production, etc. So sometimes the numbers help in the um, literature. Now there's also qualitative um, analyses as well in the in the research literature and I'm sure you compared and contrasted both of these types in um, critical analysis. So typically when we're going to do an analysis the first thing we do is break the activity down into phases. Okay, um, typically based on acceleration patterns, like a, a, a preparation phase, execution, and then follow through. So you have the wind up for if you're going to throw a baseball, you have the execution phase when you're actually going through the motions of releasing the ball, and then following release, there's a follow through. And for most motions, you can describe these three phases. And here are a few, uh, baseball throw, golf swing, right, the back swing, um, execution, and then the follow through, tennis serve, and kicking a, a soccer ball, same approach. So now when you start to look at movement, start to piece it into its phases. And you can subdivide each phase into many, many phases, depending on your goal. All right, other things to keep in mind as you start to do videos. Figure out what's the best angle to view the activity, sagittal plane, frontal plane, um, horizontal plane. Um, is one viewing angle sufficient? Do you need two cameras? Do you need to take it from two different angles and, and sync them? What's the goal of your analysis? You're looking at shoulder joint movement, glenohumeral movement, elbow, wrist, force production, etc. What kind of equipment is helpful? If you're going to watch somebody throw, you probably want them to have the, the type of ball racket that they are using. So their inertial properties are the same, so you have the same kinematics and kinetics. Clothing and background. It's really hard to find joints if you wear baggy clothes. So just keep that in mind. And then do you want to take them in competition, out of competition, out in the field, in the lab? Um, so you're going to think of all these things as you put together your videos and as you do your lab work.